I'll, I'll record it. We, I'll, I'll send it to you and then you can re-watch them to remind yourself okay. as well, okay? Yeah. So two things we need to focus on. Number one is him being separation anxiety, so him being more comfortable being by himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two is the resource guarding or claiming stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So um, they're both, they actually kind of tie together, the issues. The issues actually tie together. So we've got to do two things. We've got to be able to stop the unwanted behaviour. Mm-hmm. It just happens in this case, that's the resource guarding. Okay, we have to be able to stop that. So we have to correct that. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But we also need to do do this instead. So yeah. we can't just, even, even, even if he didn't have separation anxiety, you still want to teach him a do this instead. Right. Where people make a mistake is they use a lot of um, redirection, distraction, whatever they want to call it which is just another word for affection, to try and like stop resource guarding yeah. and uh, you know offer an alternative and all this sort of stuff, swap it for a, a higher value thing. And, and that, can, that can lure you into a false sense of security yeah. because the dog will, the dog might, if it is something that's higher value, the dog might drop it or leave it to take the higher value thing. But as soon as that's gone, well, it's not do the, that. the issue's still there. You know, I can take mm-hmm. the, you know, you can, distract the guy from stealing your car by giving him an ipad but it's you know as soon as you're conscious that yeah i'll be back tomorrow to get your car you have to make an obvious no what you're doing right now is not acceptable but here i want to show you what to do instead so you have to actively be able to correct the unwanted behavior then teach the do this instead now the do this instead is also how you get rid of your separation anxiety so You've got two sides of the coin. One is stopping the unwanted behaviour. The other is teaching him how to cope, in this case, by being by himself. Or if he's tempted to claim something, then he, he can have a, oh, I should do this instead. And that's your place training. So what you do, and you can look at this on my YouTube channel or any of my social media to remind you. I'll send you some links after this. But you get his crate. Creates the easiest way to teach place training as well, okay? Because there's one way in, one way out. Yeah. So you put him on his leash. You always use a lead when you're teaching place. And you um, ideally use some food. I would just use some of his daily food. But you want to use some food as well. So you put him on his leash. And you think of it as piano lessons, okay? So 10 minutes, two, three times a day. Or whatever realistically can fit into your schedule. The more, The more the better. Okay, so the first thing is you get your leash, slip lead, whatever, it doesn't matter, just a, a leash. And and the leash is to give him direction because he either sees the command right now as negotiable or he doesn't understand it. And either way, we don't want either of those things. We want it to be not negotiable and he understands it. So leash on. And then what's what's his name? Jet. Jet. So you're, that's a good rotty name. There you go. So you're literally leash on and you're doing name, command, affection. So you're going jet, place or bed or whatever you want to call it right now. OK, jet, bed. And you take him on the leash and you take him to his bed. OK, you're not being nasty, you're not being horrible, but you're going. So jet, bed, then the leash pressure into the bed. As soon as he goes into the bed, you pay him. Boom. Good. A bit of food. Okay. Ideally, as I say, just use his daily food. Just split his daily food or the kibble of that into five, you know, amounts and have a treat pouch and and just start using it, feed him through that. So jet bed into the bed. Good food. Instantly, you're bringing him back out the bed. Okay. So you're going jet break or whatever release command you're going to use. But in my videos, you'll see place and break. So jet place into into place, good. Jet break, pull him out the bed, good. Straight yeah, straight away, straight away. You um, are just doing ins and outs. You're just bed good, break good, bed good, break good. You're saying it once, making it happen. Right. Okay. And every time you good, and when do you good? Well, when he comes out the bed, you good him, and when he goes in the bed, you good him. I do a, a, my rule is all four paws. As soon as all four paws are on that bed, boom, pay him. As soon as all four paws come off the bed, pay him. So what you then start doing is, and you might even find just that first exercise that you do, say ten minutes or until that amount of food's gone, you're just in good, out good, in good, out good, in good, out good, and what you're starting to see is you'll be going jet bed, maybe by repetition 
t- uh, before 10 probably. And you're going jet bed, and before you can even pull the lead, he's on his way to the bed. Because right. he's like, well, I go there, I get paid. And you're like, yeah, mate, of course. I, w- I want you to enjoy this, and there's no extra pressure here. Just mm-hmm. bed, good. Always use food mm-hmm. when you get what you want, not to get what you want. Okay, so jet, bed, in the bed, good. Jet, break, pull them out, good. In good, out good, in good, out. And then what you're doing is you, when you feel that he, you're starting to say the words and you don't need as much leash pressure, he's getting comfortable just with that movement. Mm-hmm. Have you got him on a prong collar? No, I'm ordering one because he's, he's just... He's yeah, he'll just be all over the place right now because you wouldn't have him like four weeks. Mm-hmm. So you'll be better getting him on a prong. Mm-hmm. And if you need a link for that, just mess- I'll give you a link or whatever for the size and stuff, okay? But get get a prong on him, and because your your one for your wee one, that'll be too small for him. So get get him on a prong, and because that's going to give him you much more power steering when you're trying to tell him what to do. It'll make much more sense to him for what, and obviously it'll help him walks and stuff as well, of course. So um, teach him that in and out, in and out. Mm-hmm. Then what? Because you want to get the point going. Hey, you want to do some place? And he's like, yeah, mm-hmm. in and out, okay? Because that's how he gets paid. So, you then work on the three Ds, okay? Now, the three Ds are distance, duration, and distraction. So, I generally start with duration, okay? So, I'm going, right, okay, uh, Jet, I think you're getting this a little bit. Let's up the stakes. So, you Jet, place, into place, okay? Mm-hmm. And you maybe just w- make him wait 10 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever you think he can handle. And you can use body, pre- you know, spatial pressure, your body language to block him so he can't come out. You could do a crate bop. Um, if he comes out without your permission, give it a pop. Add that verbal marker, bang. No, Jake, Jake, please. Yeah. He will not come out until I tell him. Good, okay. So you're already getting, you, you just need to put a bit more of the foundation where he enjoys it a bit more. And then adding in some duration. And then breaking him, okay. And then you want to work, and then then you want to work on distance. So what you're looking for from the dog when he's in the place, you're looking what what are you wanting to release? What are you wanting to allow out the bed? Is when he goes from standing to sitting, or from sitting to lying, to where you get that oh, him giving up. And what he's got to learn is the key to getting off this bed is relaxing not getting more mental. And of course, if he, because it's piano lessons, so he's going to make mistakes. So if he comes out without your permission or he gets too excited or he starts barking at you and he's on the bed, bring him out, correct the behaviour, give him a pop, no, back into bed. So you work on duration. The longer he's there, the more powerful you are. Number two is distance. Put him in place. The further away you can get from him, the more powerful you are. Number three, distraction. The bigger the distraction, the, and he stays there, the more powerful you are. Someone coming to the door, feeding time, um, going to bed, leaving him alone, going to another room, going to the toilet, making dinner in the kitchen, what, what, all the people being in your home. Now, ideally, you're doing all this with the crate door open, okay? Because that's you're trying to make a psychological crate effectively, not just a physical crate, or else you fall into the trap of just holding the dog back. But, you know, you're restraining the dog, but not training the dog. Um but part of distraction will be closing the crate. But you want to be able to do that as part of distraction, not as, oh, I need to do that or else he's going to burst out the crate. So the way you know, the the way I have it, where you know you fully don't have separation anxiety anymore is when overnight he sleeps in his crate and he doesn't have, he doesn't make a peep. He's comfortable. He'll sleep in the crate overnight. Um, does, where does he sleep at the moment? I just put my eyes in the kitchen. Okay. It seems to be where he's mostly settled. Okay, yeah. And so he's shown you he does have limitations. He can be settled. It's not like in your bed or in your bedroom or whatever. So he can do it. We just need to make a more positive association with the crate. Um, and, you know, whether that means initially moving the crate to the area that he's in, that he's more settled and, and building on it from there. But once you're able to get him in the crate overnight, and he sleeps overnight and he's, he's fine, then, you, then you're then you able to also leave him like, and go out for six hours and blah, blah, blah. That's generally the rule of doing um, place training with then separation anxiety. So, yeah. yeah, but you have to practice that lots and lots. I see 100 repetitions, he understands it. Oh, with the door open? The goal is to have the door open, but part of your distraction will be closing the door, you know, and going, no, you know what, I'm, I'm wanting to close this crate, not because I have to, but just to, so that you're comfortable with it and go for a shower without and and this is where 
we'll come into the next part, which is how we correct him. Okay.